In this video, I'm going to describe the layouts that we use when we're building a Java Swing graphical user interface. This video is just an overview. There's no code in this video, but I will have a hands-on working example in a video that follows this one. Big question, what is a user interface in Java? This definition has changed a little bit over the years. So if we go back, remember Java was released to the world in 1995. That was a very different era in computing. That was an era where, uh, you know, if you talk to somebody who worked for a corporation, like a Fortune 500 corporation, and, and that person was a programmer, there's a fairly good shot that person was a mainframe programmer. And so we were just making this transition to this client server model where we had a server and then we had what we often called a smart, uh, smart client, fat client, rich client, uh, which is essentially a program that runs on your local computer, which in the 90s was most often a PC. Laptops were out, but not as common as they are right now. And so we typically built a user interface just for that uh, PC. And that was using Swing. Uh, and so if you say, well, what's a user interface in Java? Kind of the default answer is like, okay, a Swing user interface. You don't tend to see Swing as much as you used to because, you know, what happened after client server? Well, the web. And then people wanted web pages. And, you know, the web, I vividly remember the late 90s when your mom and dad found out what the web was and they asked you, which was me at the time. I was freshly out of college. And what's this thing called the Internet? I don't know. Ask my nephew. He's he's a college kid. He, he knows. You know, something like that where, you know, suddenly, oh, I'll tell you all about it. So the Internet happened. Your mom and dad found out about it in 98. Uh, actually, your grandma, grandpa at this point, I guess. And uh, so that went on for a while. And then what was the next thing that happened? Well, in 08, 07, 08, we had the iPhone. Around 2010, we had Android. And all of the sudden, uh, mobile commerce really just blossomed around 2018 to present day and probably ongoing. And it kind of took a lot of people by surprise because mobile phones were, okay, that's where we play games and stuff, right? Uh, but the reality is that this device is just plain convenient. You know, you're waiting in line, you're sitting on the bus, you can clip coupons, you can order things, and all of a sudden mobile really took off. So we have to think about that when we think about what is a user interface in Java. So if we think about mobile, Android, well, it's an XML-based layout, or it could be Jetpack Compose, which is the newer UI framework for Android. Android was initially Java-based, and to this day, to some degree, still is. Although, really, now we use Kotlin and Android. Kotlin, I kind of think of as a, a child of Java or a sibling of Java because it still compiles uh, to bytecode and can run on a JVM. Not a typical JVM, but the Delphic JVM, the one that uh, we use in Android. But nonetheless, it is, you know, typically Java programmers do Android stuff or Java program, you know, a Kotlin programmer used to be a Java programmer is uh, many times what happens. So when someone says Java user interface to me today, my first thought is, oh, you mean Android. Now, iOS, okay, iOS uses uh, Swift and Objective-C, which isn't exactly Java, but it could be hitting Java services in the back end. So that could be a user interface that's plugged on to plugged into a Java backend. Then we have HTML, which can be generated by Java in an enterprise application. Uh, something like Spring Boot can generate HTML. And really, we could even consider other frameworks we could plug in with that HTML front end. So that could be a front end. And then the other one, and the one we're really talking about in this video, is Swing. So Fat Client runs on your local machine. Less common than it used to be. but Still good to learn because the concepts that we learn when we're learning Spring, uh, sorry, Swing, we can reapply to these other domains like layouts and how we could use layouts. Also, populating a combo box or a list with objects and having those objects update dynamically. So, even though the UI has changed, there's still quite a bit we can learn from it. Now, there are several different layouts that we can use, and the trick is really the layouts all have a good purpose and we can combine them together. So first, let's start with an overview of what the layouts are. And then I'll show a couple of kind of drawings where we can consider how we would combine these together. So first of all, a border layout oftentimes is the overall frame. Uh, and again, I'll show each of these in some following slides. 
form layout is a component from uh, an organization called J Goodies. That gives us rows and columns, kind of like think like a spreadsheet where you could put things. Flow layout is pretty simple. It just organizes things one right after the other, and if need be, it will create a new row. And then grid bag layout is really cool if you want to make a really professional looking app, but it's also the most complicated to learn. So we start with border layout. Couple things with that. Border layout has sections northwest, east, south, and center. Uh, I often say they're named after Fairfield's elementary schools, uh, almost. Fairfield North, Fairfield Central, Fairfield, anyway. Um, now the rules here are that uh, north, if you expand sideways, so let's say you, you stretch sideways, north will stretch sideways, center will stretch sideways, south will stretch sideways, east and west will not. On the other hand, if you stretch upwards, uh, west, center, and east will stretch upwards, north and south will not. So you really have to think about when a user resizes a screen, what is it that they're most interested in seeing uh, getting resized? And those things you want to put in the center part. Now one caveat with the border layout, you're only allowed to put one component in each of those regions. However, that component can be a J panel. And a J panel can hold multiple components, and a J panel can also have its own layout. So that's where the secret of nesting really comes in. Flow layout, I said pretty simple. Uh, we just have a J panel essentially with a flow layout. And if I put three buttons on it, they're going to align left to right. If needed, they'll wrap to another row, but essentially it's just stacking them right next to each other. Uh, form layout, this is the one from J Goodies. So in this one, we're able to create a grid, which is handy if we have kind of standardized label and then entry, label and then entry. Now that we've learned about some of the different layout managers, the real secret is to use multiple of them, use all of them. Let's look at a very simple sketch now, and then in the next slide I'll show you one that uh, is more relevant to the project that we're working on. So the border layout, it's typical to make that the, the main layout of the page because, you know, title kind of fits nicely up top button bar or something like that down at the bottom. West, I rarely see used. Can't, I've not really had a good use case for using West. But East would oftentimes be a scroll bar or something like that. Then in the center is the content that the user cares about the most because when we resize horizontal, horizontally and vertically, uh, that center part is going to resize in both directions. So we really think of that center kind of where we're doing most of our work and that's where we're going to probably put another J panel. And that J panel can have its own layout. And that layout will hold all of the components that the user will interact with. Now with the background that we've built up, we can get to the real secret of building a good layout in Swing. And that is thinking it through in advance in deciding what components need to stretch in which direction. So I'll get more into this in a hands-on video that follows this one, but nonetheless, I'll give you a little taste of it right now. Let's say that we want to have a title, and we want to have some input fields, we want to have a list of objects that could be numerous objects, and then maybe we want to have buttons down at the bottom. A good way to handle this is to create a border layout for the main panel, which is probably the most common for a main panel. Uh, put our title at the top, and then at the bottom have a flow layout with the buttons in it. Now in the center, put another border layout. And inside of the north section of this inner border layout, we'll put a form layout, or like a grid layout, basically. So it puts everything in a grid. And then in the center of this inner layout, we put the list of items. That way, when we expand... Uh, in any direction that list is going to expand because more than likely if the user wants to maximize the screen that's what they're going to focus on is uh, the list of, of items in that list so it could be zero one two three hundred so by expanding the screen you get to see more of those items so this has been a look at how to build a GUI graphical user interface with Java Swing as always I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments thank you